when I did the video, swapping my Red Sport for a Scat Pack, that I realized like, oh, this is a huge thing. What's good, YouTube? So today we're going to be going over the exact steps I took to be able to start getting my dream cars before the age of 21. We're going to be talking about everything that I did, some steps that you can take to put yourself in that same situation. And we're going to be talking about why I chose the cars that I chose in the first place. All right, so the first car that I got off my vision board was a 2021 Q50 Red Sport in a slate gray color. That was my dream car. I watched Doug do a video on it. And when I seen the video, I knew it was the car that I wanted. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't expect to be able to get that color, but I ended up getting the car shipped from another state and I got the color that I wanted and the price I was willing to pay. So that's the first car I was able to get. I got that car at the age of 19. Um, I was able to get this car because my mom did put me on her credit cards at the age of 16. So by the time I was 18, I already had a good credit score. Yeah, the first car that I started with my Navy Federal Platinum car, I got this car because it's known for its higher limits and a lower interest rate, which are two things I really, really wanted when I first started off. Looking back at it now, it wasn't really that good of a starter car. I didn't really have too much use for the higher limit, and I didn't really utilize the lower interest rate because I didn't carry a balance over 30 days. So I paid it off within 30 days every time, never really dealt with the interest. Even now, I still use the car the same way. So I didn't really get the benefits of it. Not really a good starter car, but it's definitely a great car to have. But that is the car that I started. The second car that I ended up getting was my Discover Cashback Rewards Point card. This was a great car for me at the time. It's one of my favorite cars. I would recommend people start with it just because it was great for me. But the car, um, you got 5% cash back. Quarterly, it changes. So sometimes it could be fast food. Sometimes it could be gas. Sometimes it'd be purchased from Amazon. It was great for me at the time. It kind of got me used to dealing with cars and understand how benefits worked and getting used to different cars having different purposes. But um, that's definitely the second car I started with. I got that car a year after I got my Navy Federal Platinum. Car. And after I got that car, I did go get, apply for a loan. I got my um first car loan that I applied for. I got my 2015 or 2016 Mustang. It was the orange one. If you guys follow me on TikTok, then I used to post this car all the time when I first got it. That's kind of how everything started. I got that car. It was a drop-top convertible. I had that car for about one month before I sold it to Carvana and made about $1,000, $2,000 on it. That was the first car that I got, and I got that car around March, I believe. And then you flash forward a few months later, October, October 5th of 2021, I got my Infiniti Q50 Red Sport, and I was so ecstatic when I got that car. So that's kind of what made me get that one. I kind of wanted an Infiniti because I knew it was a good balance of performance and luxury for the price point. And then I got to get it in my favorite color. got tons of compliments on this car. Even Infiniti themselves is in my comment section on TikTok when I got that car, and that was like a mind-blowing thing for me. But the process that I went through to get that car, I went through Navy Federal, of course, and the interest rate, a lot of people don't be telling the interest rate, or if they do, they have like an extremely higher rate. When I got my Infiniti Q50, I was paying about $800 a month, and I had a 4.5% interest rate. Now, interest rates were lower at the time, so it was a little bit easier to get those type of rates. But as of now, getting a 4.5 on a used car is kind of a little crazy to even come in with them type of expectations. But that is what I had on the car at the time. You flash forward eight months later, I started getting a little tired of the Q50. I was getting in the point where I, I was thinking about selling it. And I was going around the local dealership doing my pricing. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, man. I didn't really know, like, I didn't really see the big deal of the scat packs. I didn't really know the hype. I wasn't really familiar on social media. I didn't know, like, the scat pack and the Hellcat was such a big difference at the time. If you guys follow me, you know I'm kind of new to the car scene. I've never had to put money down on any car that I got, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. Getting that Q50 was, like, the biggest hassle I've ever went through with getting a car. But I did get that car shipped from either Arkansas or Arizona. I cannot remember. If y'all want the full story talking about what made that so difficult, let me know down below and I'll drop that video. But it was, like, a huge hassle to get you that. Flash forward a little bit later, about eight months later, I decided I didn't really want the Q50 no more. I was looking into the car and I knew they'd appreciate it a lot, but then I was thinking about the car market and I didn't want to get stuck with it. So I said, I'll just sell it now. And if I decide I want the car again, I'll just buy one later when they're cheaper. And you can already get a 16 or 17 model that looks exactly like the 21s and no one can tell the difference. So that was definitely my mindset when I was selling the but car. I ended up deciding to sell my Q50 and I was shopping around different dealerships getting prices. And I went to a Dodge dealership and I was telling, I told them that if they can give me a better offer than the other places, you know, I go through them. And they did have this car, but the car that I have now actually wasn't available for sale when I came through. So I told the dealership if they had this car for sale, I'll come back. But they told me it won't be for sale because it was built for someone else. So I was I was like, all right, I guess I'm not coming back because I didn't expect to get the car. But the guy who got the car built decided he didn't want it. So, of course, they called me, tell me, come look at the car. I look at the car. Of course, I liked it. I decided it's the one I wanted. It was the color I liked. It, it was a little bit different. But the main reason I ended up getting this car in the first place was just because they gave me a better offer on my Q50 than everywhere else I was shopping at. So, of course, I just went through them because it was easy. I didn't tell them to put my, my um, positive equity into my loan. So, I ended up financing the full price of this car versus, like, having something taken off. I told them just give me my equity as a check. 
Now you can do this, but when you do this, you do pay a little bit more in taxes because you don't get the trade-in value. But I was okay with that personally, so I went through and just got it as a check, and I just pocketed my money and invested but it. But you definitely do save a little bit more money in a moment. Well, I'm going to say you save more money down the line if you choose to go ahead and trade your car in, but I didn't choose to do that. So that's the main reason I did it. And the scat pack, the payments on this car is cheaper, but that's the difference between my interest rate and my terms. So when I got my Infiniti Q50, I did have a 4.5% interest rate and I did a 72 month. I did a 72 month term and my payments around about $780, $800 a month, somewhere around there. And then when I got this scat pack here, I end up I end up doing a 96 month term, which is of course is a whole lot longer. And I have about a 6% interest rate. So my payments on this car around $700, $740 a month. Not too much cheaper, but it was a little bit cheaper. I know some people don't really like the 96 month term. They say you're gonna be paying on that car for eight years, you're gonna pay on that thing till you're like 30, da 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 da. -da. Um personally, I didn't really plan on having a car too, too, too long. I plan on probably trading it in or selling it. So the, the term didn't really matter to me as much. And the payments weren't really that high. So I didn't really care about that as much. And I still don't really care about it as much. But I know some people, it's like a big deal for them. And also, you could just pay more money a month and you could pay the car off sooner. I don't really understand. I typically always advise people to get the longest term that you qualify for and just pay more versus choosing a shorter term and, pay, and forcing yourself to have to pay more money. It's always smarter to do a longer term and pay more by choice versus doing a shorter term and being forced to pay more. In my opinion, that's how I always do it, and that's what I advise people to do. But, of course, I'm not a financial advisor. My scat pack. The things that I was doing to get money when I got my scat pack. The part-time at the jewelry store, so I'm rarely there. I was rarely there. Um, I still do do some working with my mom, but primarily it's a lot of things I've been doing with my own business that's been helping me get my money to pay for the scat. That's what's been going on lately. As you guys know, I do sell the watches, so I'm still kind of injury, but not injury the way that I was before. So I do sell a lot of watches. If you guys want to check me out you know the links is in the bio you can check all that stuff out if you guys want to look at the products in the inventory but that's kind of what i've been doing to get my scat that's how i've been doing to make my payments just kind of financially how i'm affording my cars and everything like that for the people that that's have. about how i got my red sport and that's about how i afford my scat pack that's how i got these cars now if you're young if you just turned 18 if you're 16 or whatever and you're thinking about getting a scat pack hellcat q50 red sport whatever car you're thinking about getting my tips for you is to really take your time. Don't rush it. I know that sounds crazy. They're discontinuing them. Like the last thing you want to hear is don't rush, don't rush, don't rush. But you definitely can do it. If you feel like you just have to have the car, I don't recommend doing this because I definitely think you should um wait till you can truly afford the car. But if you feel like you just have to have it, I would say just try to get, if you have a, a parent, a family member, anybody that has good credit and is really on top of things, see if they can add you as an authorized user on a few credit cards, at least one or two. And they don't have to give you the card. They can keep the card. If they put you on an authorized user, you get their credit history from that credit card for as long as they had it. So you really should be shooting for grandma because, you know, grandma had her choice for years. And then when you turn 18, I say get your own credit card. If you end through a credit union, that's going to make the financing easier. All right, so if you feel like you just have to have the car and you can't wait, you have no patience, I'm going to tell you the quickest way to get the car in my opinion. But I don't recommend doing it this way just because you do want to make sure you got money to do other things and you got money to save up and you're not just living paycheck to paycheck. And once you go get a payment, you you have to pay it every month. And that does kind of put you kind of like in slavery a little bit. You're kind of chained to the car or whatever you choose to finance. So I wouldn't recommend rushing and doing it this way. But if you feel like you just have to have it, this is the tip. If you feel like you just have to have it, these are the steps I would recommend you take. Number one. That'll go ahead and get someone with good credit in your family to add you in as an authorized user for one or two of their credit cards. So that way you get their credit history on those cards so you can have like a four years history by the time you turn 18 or so on. And I'll say that'd be the biggest help because that's was a huge help for me and a lot of other people that you see. That was really a big help from them. If you guys know Quan with the track hawk, he also said he was added as authorized user on his mom's credit cards, I believe it was. So a lot of people that you see getting these cards at a young age, that's the key to how they're doing it. And then once you turn 18, I say go ahead and get your own credit card, have that card for a year or at least six months to a year. And by that point, you should be able to get approved for a loan. I would definitely say don't rush this though, guys, because I know people that are paying like $1,000 a month for RTs and so on. So it's just really, just be careful and don't rush it. And with the interest rates, you can always refinance. Just make sure you research for whatever car you want, whether it's a Scat Pack, Hellcat, Trackhawk, whatever it may be. Just make sure you do your research for everything that comes with the car and see the true cost of ownership. Because the car is more expensive than your monthly payment, insurance, and gas. It is more to a car than those three things. You know what I'm saying? So just make sure you do your research. And if you don't get the car with a warranty, just make sure you understand the type of problems that can come with the car. And a big thing for me personally, 
I would definitely think about the type of people that drive these cars. If you think over takeover right now, the first car you're going to be picturing is a scat pack, probably going crazy, being a menace to society, going crazy in traffic. So just make sure you think about the people that's going to drive the car and just the prior owners before you go get your user. I went new with my scat pack. Hellcat owners aren't as bad as scat pack owners from my experience and just meeting them and seeing them. So I have a little bit more leeway with a Hellcat than a scat pack, but a scat pack drivers are the real menace to society. Those are really the main tips that I can give you to get your dream car at an early age. That's the way that I went about it. There is different ways. There may be easier ways, but these are just the steps that I took. And the more I learn, the more I'll be able to teach you guys some easy ways to do things and y'all can learn from my mistakes and skip some of the hardest steps in life. But I hope this video helps. If you guys feel like I missed anything, let me know down below. If y'all feel like I could have added something, let me know down below. If y'all got any questions, once again, let me know down below. But make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this and just help me get better by letting me know what I can include and what I didn't include in my video. But I appreciate it. But I appreciate you guys for the help. Y'all take care. I'm going to catch y'all in the next. <laughs> Hold on. But I appreciate you guys for y'all support. And I'm going to catch you in the next. <laughs> I appreciate you guys for your support. And I'm going to catch you in the next video.